Welcome back to Ram Film Reviews. I am Randall, and this is my partner in crime. I guess Matt. crime, right? Crime? Crime? We ain't committing yeah. crimes. Don't, don't be snitching yeah. our, on each other. So, yeah. This is Mac. my good, good friend, Mac. And it is uh, 2 in the morning on a Friday night. Saturday Where morning. we went fucking ham. Yeah, we did a... Uh -huh. Had a horror threesome, if you want to call it that. Watch three movies back to back, as you can see right in front of you right now. We have the lovely Spaniard horror films titled Wreck. We've decided to go on our rampage of found footage movies, like consecutively, minus like Transylvania, right? Like, <laughs> well, true, was, I just I noticed that. Been yeah. Found footage, found footage, because mm -hmm. we did uh, Nodoy, no, no, yeah. Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the other one we did uh, after Noroi? Was it another found footage? Yeah, the Poughkeepsie tapes. Yeah, Poughkeepsie tapes. Um, mm -hmm. So found footage, found footage, found footage. Mm -hmm. Transylvania in the middle of all that. And then found footage, found footage. Kind of found footage. That's probably, we'll get to that. We'll get to that because that was... Put the, yeah. the live here for us. Mute it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you already know how that's going to go. Um, just want to make sure you know somebody comes on live we can see you, but uh, yeah, rec R E C. It's you know abbreviation for record. As in the camcorder, you record it has a little R E C on the top left hand corner. Yep. Uh, like I said, found footage. Uh, so Randall was excited. He, it's the first for him. Yeah, absolutely a first for me, and oh, man. I love, like, especially with the first movie. Mm -hmm. So let's just give you guys a rundown. Mm -hmm. You see the title. The title says, spoilers included. So fair warning. Yeah. In this one, we are going to talk descriptively about details in this movie because it cannot go without being said. Uh, there, There's not excessive details to this mm -hmm. movie. It's a pretty much simplistic kind of plot but they added a lot around it and they made it a really good movie but the basic premise of this movie is there is something that seems like possession but it also seems like zombie and you get that because it lands in the supernatural zombie horror-esque film mm -hmm. so you're already getting the the idea the gist of what it is and pretty much it's that. Mm -hmm. You're getting zombie possession, basically. All right, he, just, he paused the, the movie. He was like, wait, hold up. There's an infection. But there's, uh, there's yeah, the church is involved. And he yeah. was just like, I was like, bro, just play, you know, just yeah. watch it. Be, it becomes... <laughs> it was awesome just to see him, like... Yeah, because that. at first, you're like, okay... It seemed like it was just going to be possession, right? Well, you no, get the person's infection... Well, I mean, they give you the impression yeah. that they're going to quarantine the space, right? Mm. But what you're experiencing is this one person, the first old lady we had introduced Conchita. to. Conchita. Conchita. And demonic roar yeah, he did that I pointed that. out to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a demonic roar. And then she goes ahead and first victim happens. Their first bite victim mm -hmm. happens. And then we're just waiting. We're waiting to see what happens. Nothing happens right away. Conchita gets shot up, right, on multiple occasions. Con Conchita, right. I don't think, ever died, ever. <laughs> like, I think she just kept on. Yeah. But um, but we get this visual of a lady that comes all across possessed. Mm -hmm. Not zombie. I get more possession out of that, yeah, right? Not your typical, you know, neighborly self. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting at, especially because of the roar, because you hear layers in the vocal, right? Exactly. So, and you know what they do that with these kind of like movies, and they add that multi layer vocal uh, pattern, you're mm -hmm. given the impression that there's multiple things inside that body giving off various voices, mm -hmm. hence demonic and spirits, all that shit inside a body. Mm -hmm. So we get the gist and the idea of what they're trying to portray. So I'm getting that, 
And then all of a sudden, you start getting the idea more as the film goes along that this also extends to it being contagious through the bite. Yeah. And then that's when you're like, okay, so it's a literal contagious viral possession. That's a mouthful. It is a demon that can continue to add itself to more bodies mm-hmm. as more keep getting bit. Yeah, it's not, you know, like a typical possession, like, inherits your body through, like, it just jumps through your mouth. It's a pyramid a, scheme a of pyramid fucking scheme. <laughs> zombies possessed. Yeah, because we, there's one main guy, or one main possessed, yeah. which is a, a character called Medeiros. We're going to talk in a little bit yeah. more detail uh, about Medeiros. The beautiful, lovely Tristina Medeiros. Yeah. We're going to talk more about her, but it starts with her and then trickles down to all these other characters. Yeah. And all of them, Are one. we find out in part two, Yeah, connect to I mean, so Cristina. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, literally, it's a viral zombie contagious possession. That's a lot. What's up, Merle? That welcome, is a welcome, lot. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, <but laughs> Hashtag Phil fucking Collins. That's, That's right. Uh, That's um, right. But yeah, the premise, basically, uh, to give you an idea, again, we said spoilers, so uh, it's already happened. Yep. Uh, so, uh, a journalist, would you say, right? A, you know, not a journalist, no, no. She is a, a TV, TV host, show host. host of a show called While You're Asleep. Mm-hmm. Mientras que usted duerma, because this is filmed all in Spain. It's all based in Spain, yeah. uh, primarily Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Um, so the whole movie is all in in Spanish, right? It has, um, uh, has the English subtitles for yeah non-speaking uh, you know Spanish people or people just don't can't understand with yeah. them. You know. So the first film is uh angela the reporter journalist mm-hmm. and co-host of Pablo. mientras que usted duerma yeah. while you sleep is uh joining on a ride along with firefighters mm-hmm. uh to experience what they go through on a day-to-day during their shifts which means you know them being around uh how they all live in the same housing mm-hmm. uh they all cook for each other all that stuff and then they're just waiting to see if an alarm happens yeah. and maybe there's a fire that they have to run to or maybe it's bringing a cat down from a tree or whatever possibility it is. In this case, what ends up happening is uh, an old lady has locked herself uh, in her room apparently and mm-hmm. has fallen and there was screaming. No idea what's happening, but they can't access the room. Mm-hmm. Um, come to find out, it's Conchita. Yeah, exactly. Right, which we just spoke about now. So, Conchita ends up being the the possess the first possessed zombie esque figure mm-hmm. we see, and uh, in the process, you're seeing all of this just implode through uh, through everyone that's there, all the other tenants that live in that building. Yeah, and you got to make the um, so elderly, the youth. Yeah. Uh, just you know different uh backgrounds it's yeah like, it's like a little diverse um yeah so, they yeah. added it well it was a lot of the diversity in age groups yeah but then they threw in uh which actually happens in real life like uh where you have foreigners that move to a country yeah. so in this case uh a chinese couple chinese family yeah a fa- yeah actually a full family a including family. a dad mm-hmm. moved uh lived in the building as well um, well, Randall was saying, uh, yeah, about the TV show like happening. It's what would you say around two, three in the morning, give or take. Yeah, you know they're filming. Everybody's asleep. Like it says, "Why you're asleep?" Yeah. So it's just basically the the graveyard shift. You know, showing you what happens while you know basically most of the world is asleep. Yeah. And I just love it. It's just like the actors play such a realistic role like you know they're goofy they don't know what to do they're nervous they don't know how to stand in front of a camera or they're excited in front of a camera i mean part of what mm -hmm. i liked about it too was the fact that at least with the first two movies Mm -hmm. right 
Because uh, the third, and we'll, from what we've kind of gotten the idea from the fourth, deviate a lot from the first two. But um, in the first two, well, at least mainly the first one, it's raw footage. So it's supposed to be the unedited yeah, footage. POV, uh, so point of view. everything handled. is like, okay, they filmed it, and they never got a chance to edit it, so here is the entire fucking thing. Um, because you see the parts where she's like, hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah, hey. bloopers. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like, like she's talking to the camera. She's like, listen, we can cut this out later. I just want to give this guy the satisfaction that he's on camera. That's it. Yeah. We can cut it out. It's fine. Like, so you have moments like that happen, so it gives you that feel like everything kind of feels more uh, on that realness kind of tip. Uh, exactly. So they did a really good job with that. But, you know, in the process with Angela, um, the TV show host, um, she doesn't want to stop filming anything. And yeah, she maybe. tells the cameraman, Pablo, uh, yeah. to keep filming. Don't stop. Let it keep going. Yeah, Don't stop. No public, matter what yeah. they say. Like, the cop that's uh, in there, because there's uh, ends up being firefighters and cops inside the building, mm -hmm. they're trying to get them to stop filming. They never stop filming. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's it was just a blast, man. Yeah, because they went from just recording for a TV show to like, yo, what the hell's happening here? There's more, more to what you're sh you're telling us, and more something more deep, you know. So Angela and Pablo's decision were, you know, amazing for us to view what they recorded. Um, and they kept on insisting the public needs to know, the yeah. public needs to see this. And then it's just twist after twist. You know what? Uh, you think this is happening, but no, it's actually more deeper. The suspense, uh, yeah. Man. So then uh, they quarantined the uh, the tenants. You know they're trying to get out because uh, certain uh, individuals get bitten. Uh, well, they're injured. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're injured. injured. They're injured. At this point, all we know is they're injured, right? Yeah. Um, they quarantine the building. They don't tell anybody what's going on. Nobody knows what's happening. Like mm -hmm. not even the cop. But at one point, they finally say, "Like, hey, uh, we believe there's an infection." Inside yeah. the building. Yeah, with megaphones, they're like, you know, saying from the outside. Yeah. And they're saying, do not try to leave the building. We need to quarantine to make sure it's safe. And they keep giving that same story, which is, we've seen this before in other movies, like where we're saying the whole CDC for America yeah. type of thing. Uh, or I guess for for them, they use BNQ, right? That's what they call it, um, BNQ? No, wait, no. BNQ, no. G GEOs were the the SWAT cops. Never mind. Yeah, no, no. But no the, I'm talking BNQ. about the yeah when they were saying Bang Cool. Remember they were like Bang mm. Cool, and they were like, yeah, that's nuclear, yeah, atomic, yeah, yeah. and whatever uh, chemical. Mm -hmm. So, um, they're not given any details. They're just saying there's an infection. They don't explain to them like, hey, contagious. Hey, spreads by a bite. Hey. Might want to stay clear from people. Yeah, it's just very vague. And yeah. they're just like, look, this is a possible infection. We're going to send a health inspector to see what's going on. Collect <laughs> some samples. Yeah. And, you know, and we'll let you go, you know. Yeah. Just give them the little, you know, little info, you know, need to know basis type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things get hectic. Uh, things are happening. Yeah. And then health inspector comes in. Uh, he goes to test uh, the sub. Well, no, not test. No, he said they're, they're going to take blood out. But well, he comes yeah, in with a yeah. syringe and just injects yeah. the two uh, big, injured big things, parties, yeah. and they just start convulsing and yeah, help they felt they. Yeah. I think they felt they had an antidote already mm -hmm. for what was happening, and uh, yeah, it didn't work. I think it was more that than because I don't remember. Did they inject the cop? No, they get get. They only injected the the, dude, firefighter. the firefighter, right? They handcuffed them. Yeah, there's a the first of uh, bite victims is one of the cops, mm -hmm. and one of the firefighters, um, and yeah, the the firefighter is the one that gets injected, and it's straight up on the bite mark. Man, how how good were those? Uh, yeah, the, like I would say, the props, the special effects, not special effects, the S effects. I'm sorry. Yeah. The blood, all that, just the texture, the molding of the the bite marks. She looks so real. It's just amazing. It's yeah, they did a fantastic job. And considering that the first movie, the budget was... Oh, yeah. $2 million. Right? And the box office it made... 
uh, 13.8 or 0.5. I'm sorry, 32.5 or 32.8 million dollars. Yeah. That's a, an immense it's amount. A, yeah, it's a big fucking... That's, that's literally a 30 mil flip to a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and considering that budget... Uh, I mean, I guess the plus was that the setting was one singular building. Exactly, yeah. Right? So that helped. Um, everything was POV, so you don't need too much with the cameras. Yeah. So I would imagine there wasn't, what I would say, a crazy amount of stunt work in that first one. Mm. Yeah, Just some running here yeah. and there. Less than um, probably like less than five party scenes. Probably they could use a stunt double, but so I would imagine, yeah, they managed to keep a, a decent budget for that movie, and the turnaround being the thirty million flip, like that's yeah. huge. That's really huge, and not only that, but it won a ton of awards, yeah. right? Like the first film itself won so many fucking awards. It's just a list of awards. I yeah, I, I don't even count them, but. Uh, I'm not sure how long it took to film, but I did find out uh, part two, Rec 2, it took about six weeks to film. And Rec 3, um, Genesis, uh, took about seven weeks. We're not talking about f- part four. We have yet to, uh, I don't, we don't own it. Uh, soon. Uh, it'll we'll, be here soon. Soon it'll be here. I didn't hesitate. I yeah. saw I saw that first one and I said, I need to buy this entire thing. Yeah, so, uh so it's I have on the, the way. I have them uh, physical copy. Part three, thanks to our boy Placata. He got that for me. I don't know how, but thank you. Um, so I've seen these movies endless of times, and thankfully I brought them over for Randall to experience this. Yes. But I found out there's a four pack that came out in, I think, 2012. No, not 2012. Um, 2014, probably after part four. And it's it's pretty high up there on eBay. But Randall found a good price on Amazon. Yes, sir. He used uh, some uh, nifty handy-dandy coupons. So That's right. Amazing deal, so I'm happy he got that Yeah. on Blu-ray. So if you're yeah. out to search part four, I'd say buy the pack. Individually, you're going to waste probably double the money or triple, possibly. Yeah. But yeah, back to the, the premise of this movie. So, Randall, how'd you feel like... You know, let's say where right where we're, we we stopped talking about the uh, the health inspector. He got there. He injected them. Hell broke loose. Yeah. The the cop and the well at that point mm-hmm. the health inspector opens up and explains what's going on. To his knowledge. Yeah, to his yeah. knowledge that he knows there's an infection. Um, it doesn't travel airborne. No, you know it's not airborne. Yeah. So they say saliva. Bite, saliva. Bite, bite. He mentions blood. Yeah, this is where it gets weird. There's three. There's three uh, ways they could spread. You know, right, they mention saliva. They mention blood, and through bites, and through the um, yeah, through the bites, right? Through the bites. So this is where Randall. He was like, I don't get it. This is saliva, blood, but you see scenes where people. Were yeah, just there's a couple of scenes where you see blood splatter, blood splatter, place. and that person didn't turn a. Um, upon that splatter they ended up having to get bit mm-hmm. to turn but yeah like that was a part that kind of bugged me a bit and this the transition from human to you know zombie demon it's fairly like quick probably seconds right give or take it was quicker as it pressed films, on in the yeah later films in the first one because remember the cop and the firefighter took forever yeah it took a few i guess took a while for them maybe an hour i mean uh, we're not we're not well, sure they, they kind of explained also they did say that it varies true he did say that yeah he did say that it can vary that was in the was first, that in first, the second that was was the first. The first one yeah, yeah in the, the first, first one inspector said that yeah they uh he said that it varies on the on the turn mm-hmm. and he did know it was gonna happen because remember he, he also started handcuffing them they were handcuffing them, and then before they were able to handcuff the, the cop is yeah, because the ma- the the two cops the the first two cops that went in, um, he, the partner that has not been that wasn't bitten, he was very emotional and you know distressed that his partner was in that situation, he didn't want to handcuff his partner, and on, that into a hesitation. bed or whatever, um, 
The slight hesitation so was if, killer. If he would have done Literally. it, <laughs> if he would have done it, uh, probably could have saved plenty of people's lives. Uh, but yeah, so again, yep. the premise: they go into this uh, building, they find uh, this, you know, the infected. But the health inspector's uh, knowledge, well, not knowledge, just his story of why is happening there. He doesn't He's, have all that. Yeah, he said he he got information from a vet. Yeah, he didn't say that. You know, so. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't know the full story, and we don't find out more of the story towards till no till the end of this when yeah. we get more details, and then once we enter part two, that's when we get the full story yeah. on everything. Yeah, but what is the first at thing this on? point yeah. in the first movie? All they know is that there was a dog that arrived to the vet's office that was sick. Went wild and started biting everybody and everything in that vet's office. Mm -hmm. And they traced that that dog came from that building, which we had heard about earlier. Belonged to a little girl that was also feeling a little under yeah. the weather. The little girl and, Jennifer, uh, saying that she had a ta ta tonsillitis. Tonsillitis, yeah. Yeah. Kept on saying, no, she has tonsillitis. Like, ah, no, no. Well, she... throughout, uh, throughout the film, like, her lips are breaking. Yeah. She's getting mm -hmm. pale. Yeah. Sweating and just yeah, and at that yeah. stage we're like, I don't trust that. That ain't no tonsillitis. That looked like dead face. Yeah. Um. So yeah, ultimately that's that. That was a correlation to the timeline of how we got from, uh, from a firefighter walking in for an old lady to a whole building quarantined. Uh, the only information given out at this point was literally that a dog that came from that building carried an infection and mm -hmm. that it was contagious. That's all that was known. Um, mm -hmm. As the movie proceeds, uh, we start finding out a few more details. Uh, once more of uh, Angela, the TV host, keeps pushing with her camera guy, her cameraman, Pablo. Mm -hmm. And they finally make it to this one apartment in that building oh, the penthouse. that remains locked because the person who lives in it only comes once every few years. Yeah, some guy from Madrid, he hadn't been there for years. It's yeah. always been locked. Yeah. So um, the, the room's been locked. Nobody's been in and out. That's what you're believing. Right, well, they haven't seen him in years, so they're just assuming he's away. And um, mm -hmm. at this point, they have the keys. They enter the room. They lock themselves in the room. But tell me that scene, like of trying to get the key, find the keys. Oh yeah, there was a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety. So, this movie, yeah, this movie, is, we're on our on the edge of our. Well, I was the edge of my seat. He was. You on, have a heart condition. You might not be good with this one. He was with his pillow, just like mm -hmm. fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, I was here sweating, and, mm -hmm. and I've seen these movies plenty of times, but I just get so into it. And like I said, it's a POV, yeah, for a first, you know, first person. So you, I, I put myself in the movie. I'm yeah. Pablo, the cameraman, just you know, running up the stairs, yeah, just recording, you know, hearing. Oh, it's just yeah. There's that, that scene right there is really intense because they have mm -hmm. all those possessed zombies literally running up the stairway, trying to come to them, and they're just. Just that one reach away, that yeah. one reach away, and they finally they ready to get into the into the room, close it up, lock it up, and this is when they start walking around and start seeing a bunch of things, religious artifacts, mm -hmm. newspaper, many prints, crucifixes, yeah. uh, pictures of children, and all stuff. And when she see a picture of the children, you're like, ooh. This looks rather pedophilia-ish or something. But I, it turns I, out not that. Yeah. You know, it turns out it's not that, which is good, because that would have been worse mm -hmm. of an image uh, with right. the religious part than mm -hmm. what uh, one critic decided to, to hate about it. Yeah. But uh, you start understanding by the glimpses on the wall that they start describing uh, possession. And it all started with Cristina Medeiro, who was the first yeah. to show the signs. And um, they were trying 
to fix her and mm. figure out an antidote also because I guess they figured out that it was contagious and at this point you're finding out that oh the Vatican is aware of the situation yeah. and not only that but the Vatican decided to send a priest along with this child that's possessed with a contagious mm -hmm. version of possession to a building with tenants yeah they want to be discreet you know nobody will question so, anything yeah. so, so they send it to that a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of experiments experiments are made. Uh, like I said, Randall said, like a bunch of newspapers, photos, there's articles about this possession, and then you see the the dressers, the tables are full of test tubes, they're full of like just you know equipment, and I'm like, oh, it looks like a mad scientist is in here, and yeah, we find you know documents of uh, what experiments, kids, you know, a bunch of. Well, you find out about more. You find out about more of the kids in part two. True. Yeah. But in part one, it's a lot of Tistina Madero, mm -hmm. right? And you find out a lot of the focus of everything had to do with that one child. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're introduced to the attic. Yeah. So mind you, uh, in Spain, these uh, what would you call it? like? It's like it's a building. It's like a town hall. I don't know. I don't know. I don't but know. each each floor has. It was like a condo, but yeah, there was a yeah. penthouse, and I guess the penthouse had an attic. But each floor had uh, two uh, two tenants. Yeah. And these uh, and these. Except uh, the penthouse floor. Yeah. The penthouse these are uh, yeah of course sweet. these apartments or living conditions were just huge as fuck. Hallways yeah. were just deep, you know, and so again the the penthouse is just so big. There's so, so much space, so much room. Even though know, you don't feel it because it's so crowded with everything. Cloud, like, yeah, of course. The, the priest had everything because it literally felt like it was a, a possession hoarder's house. Mm -hmm. because, or a, Yeah, every inch of the room An was admirer so of possession hoarder's <laughs> yeah. house. I was trying to figure out the best way to, term that, to put yeah. that into terms, but yeah. So yeah, but, leading, leading to the attic, yeah. uh, they're just, you know, just, you know, walking through... Do they hear something upstairs, or do they, they just point up to they it? They just see it. They see it, okay. And they and they see it, and it was, wasn't it already open? Oh, no. They cross through it, and the thing just like kind of swings down, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, so the door just kind of opens while they're walking through. They freak out, and I'm already saying to myself, like, don't fucking do it. But with so much that you've seen, what well, that they've seen... Yeah. They have to check it out. They have to find an answer for what the fuck is yeah, going no, on. Yeah, exactly. That's the only reason Angela kept pushing. It was like, we need to know. We need to know. We need to know. And then, but at that point, it's not even her. She's telling him, don't do it. Oh, true. And Paolo's like, I'm just going to put the camera. I'm just going to do the yeah, camera. Yeah, he was just going to put the camera to record and probably uh, rewatch it. So. This is by far yeah. one of the biggest jump scares I've had in years. And then I've seen them, you know, this is... Like, yeah, we've watched a lot of movies already together, a lot of horror movies. And not, obviously, like, not all of them have, like, big jump scares yeah. or anything like just that. Just the usual, ah, there's a few, all. Yeah, there's a usual, like, ah. Start dancing. You know? Yeah, no, like, like, a little, ah. This man levitated, bro. No, but, yeah, this thing <laughs> literally almost put me through my wall. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it was, it caught me. And I expected it, because I'm looking at this guy moving a camera... In a dark ass attic, I'm like, I'm. They're not gonna not do anything right. here. They're obviously gonna like. It's a perfect setup, you know. But you're expecting either you're gonna see just eyes in the background, maybe, or well, or something. So, I'm not gonna spoil exactly how it happens because that would probably be the best one to get you. It was executed just perfectly. They they timed it so well. Mm -hmm. They timed it so well. But this is definitely the biggest jump scare in the entire film, right? Yeah. And it, to me, in the entire fucking series so far. Yeah. Um, and we haven't seen four yet, but I'm not expecting anything in part four to make me jump like that one. Mm -hmm. But, so you get introduced uh, there to a child, mm -hmm. right? Because it was a Madero. That was just no. a child. No, like a boy, yeah. Yeah, it was like a boy. Um, which, ultimately, like, if you think about it, I don't think you see that boy again, do you? Oh Poss yeah, you Poss do. possibly, possibly. Not, not, at least not in part one. No, no, of course not. Not in part one, at least. But 
Um, yeah, so pretty much at that point is where you start reaching the conclusion of part one. Yes. Yeah, right? So at that point you see the film ends so, classically yeah. in a perfect way for this movie to end. Um, yeah, you don't see... Cliffhanger, you know? Yeah, it gives you the best kind of cliffhanger. In a sense, in a sense it's a cliffhanger, but you kind of determined, oh, yeah, there's no way anybody else mm-hmm. makes it through this. You know? Um, I find that in part two different. Yeah. But... The climax of the film was really well executed. Like those last, and I even told you, I think I went because I paused it yeah. when there was like ten minutes left. I'm like, yeah, these time. last ten minutes are gonna be fucking crazy, because mm-hmm. you're gonna have to find out every single detail. Because at this point, they hadn't mentioned possession. No. You only saw the clips. Just infection. All you knew was to... infection and all that shit, right? All yeah. you knew was infection. All you knew was contagious. All you knew was there was a dog. Until you find out that the guy that lived in the penthouse was a fucking priest with articles of a possessed little girl, that's when you're like, holy fuck, it's possession. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and that's that. That's what immediately sold me right there. Like, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, the I want everything that has to do with this <laughs> because yeah. you just sold me on something amazing. No, exactly. And we didn't hesitate. We didn't wait for the credits. We just immediately put part two in. And part two, it's continuation. It's like, right? Well, they say it's 70 minutes, but... It's 70 minutes from the point that they quarantined. They quarantined, okay. So that doesn't count the... Whatever length it took from quarantine to what we saw. Yeah. Because it was almost instantaneous, and the only reason yeah, I'm saying that is that. because remember, once the film starts with uh, a SWAT team going inside the building because they feel like it's getting ready, it's ready to be cleared, mm-hmm. right? And they're gonna send in a health inspector with them again. Another yeah, health, health inspector, inspector yeah. but this one was not same like the first health inspector. He this knew, one knew exactly. He let on, yeah. He knew too much. He knew yeah. where to go. He told this guy knew everything. Yeah, he, he was like, he knew everything. He was like, go here, do this. So he was the guy, you know. He was the one that knocked. <laughs> so know, this health him. inspector joins the SWAT team. Uh, turns out he's not a health inspector at all. He is a priest uh, from uh, the Vatican, mm-hmm. sent to procure. A blood specimen or a blood, uh, blood drawn from the original uh, child, drawn. which is yeah. Tristina Medeiro. So um, that's all he needs is the blood and proof. Yeah, that and and do you think that's the antidote or to get an antidote? It was from it that? was to use that to create an antidote oh, no. from that. That was the idea. Which at this point now we're turning priests into fucking biologists, but <laughs> but he um, was a badass. Health inspector slash priest slash. Yeah, he was great. He was fucking great. He got that like buck fifty cut like on yeah, his no, face. Like you, yes. you could tell he's been through some shit. <laughs> like the dudes, yeah. the dudes fought his battles, you know, and mm-hmm. even more so the way he's acting amongst all these possessed creatures. Like yeah. none of it wears was where he was too, where he seemed too out of place or anything like that. No, he the only like, place he was, the only spot he was out of place was uh, the com- confessing to the SWAT team. What's happening? Because uh, they just, especially was a one uh, SWAT team member called Lara. Yeah, he's just freaked out, you know, which you could expect somebody to do that in that position. Yeah, he's <laughs> freaking out with everything happening, yeah, just, and it's because they just finished losing one of their men. Yeah, so, and one of their men got bit, and he turned real quick. Yeah, that true. guy was instantaneous. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. In part two, all of a sudden, like the transformation was almost like dun 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 dun. Yeah, and what I love about that part, uh, I think his name was Martos. Uh, when he attacks them, the priest just he just comes up and he just starts praying. And that 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 SWAT guy, he's about six something, big guy. He just lets go of the the yeah. other SWAT team member, and he just looks at the priest and he just stops and he's still. Well, at this point, we still don't know he's a priest. True. Wait, we wait, just, did he? No. 
Oh no, he doesn't. He just starts praying. Yeah, and that's when. Everybody's, right after that, yeah, is when they find he out he's a priest. That. Everybody's like confused. Um, yeah, because he just starts praying. Like he just starts saying a prayer, and and the, and and the guy that's possessed is just like staring there and staring and not just, doing yeah, anything, unable to move. And then they shove him into a like room. A trance, yeah. Put a knife into the into the door and hang a rosary on it, and all of a sudden he can't even bang on the door. Mm-hmm. So that's when you get. That's when the SWAT team gets the clear idea that there's more to this yeah. than they know. Yeah, How is this just true. some viral infection? How are you telling me this is just something, mm-hmm. you know, an infectious disease? Yeah, exactly. And that's when they unzip the jacket and oh, yeah, visible collar. Yeah, he just he just rips it out and there's the... Oh, well, Lara. Lara's the one that... Oh, he did that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lara lowers his head and he goes, oh, look, he's a priest. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, that's where confession time happens. And yeah. he explains, listen, and he's this is happening. Yeah. Lara starts kind of going hysterical at this point. More than he, yeah. Uh, Not yet. No? He goes full hysterical later on when they're in that room. True. But he starts going hysterical here. Mm-hmm. And uh, then it's explanation time. Yeah, and then the priest, uh, he he's the one basically giving, he's the one giving orders. Yeah. Without his uh, vocal rec- recognition, recognition, recognition through mm-hmm. a walkie-talkie, yeah, nobody could get out of the building. Yeah, he has to give the orders uh, through a little walkie-talkie yeah. too. So, yeah, nope, he's not same. budging. He's like, nope, we're gonna find the blood. Uh, that's what we're here for. Yep. The unfortunate part is that they do find the blood, and then they what need to find to more it? blood. Yeah, what happens to <laughs> it? It's just, the, the, it's okay, that was the other part that I found was really cool about how they handled. Uh, cause he goes, I need to test it. Now I feel like he poured way too much more than he needed to pour. But either way, even though <laughs> how much way. he poured, it's still the same outcome. Yeah, no, no, I get that, but I'm just saying, like, when I saw yeah, how he much he poured, it. I'm like, dude, you need an antidote. How are you gonna get rid of, like, half the fucking vial? Yeah, he did. Uh, so he pours the blood into a tray, says a prayer to the tray, and then the blood starts boiling, which was fucking great. It looked fucking great. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they did an amazing job with it, man. Um... But this one had also kind of a video game esque feel to it too. Like if you're yeah. playing Dune, or or, or um, well, not Dune, Doom, or damn it, what the fuck is the other one? I can't remember the name of the other one. But either way, mm-hmm. it's like one of those games because it gives you that feel when when the SWAT team members because they have little cameras on their heads yeah, they have helmet and they're just like too. running. Boom, 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 it gives you that feel like. In or like if you're playing if you're playing Double uh, O Seven, okay, from like N sixty four, like if you're playing mm-hmm. that kind of game, like it gives you that feel, and it was fucking dope. It was really good how they did that. What I like too, the hel- helmet cams, on um, the like, the left bottom side had either their heartbeat or just sound, uh, I think sound it, waves or something yeah. like that, heartbeat waves or something. Yeah, which is a nice, it was a nice edit to it, a nice ad, whatever word. Um, <laughs> But I just loved every actor. It's just it's a word. It's just a word. It's a movie too. <laughs> every actor just sold their part. Yeah. I couldn't say that you know, this actor acted shitty or they didn't know how to act. No, the acting was great. The acting was fantastic. It was just like you know, like being around your neighbor. You know, you got the the nosy neighbor, uh, the neighbor you think does things. You know. You know, just behind your back or something like that. Uh, just people freaking out, you know. And what the situation... And what this could happen. Um, so... Let me see here. So, I was going to say part one. Again, it had a $2 million budget. Yeah. It raised three thirty-two thousand. I mean, 32 million. Uh, part two was... And then, I don't know what the budget was, but it then made... 18 million dollars in the mm-hmm. box office part three was a 6.4 million budget and it made about 10 million so as you can see um there was a decline and part three well becomes uh, evidence of why that decline happens more <laughs> what the budget went up but the no the decline in the box office. in the box office yeah they still yeah. made their profit <laughs> yeah it still made the money back but so, okay, to conclude with part two, mm-hmm. um, you revisit 
with a character from the first movie. I'm not going to specify which one because here I don't think we want to spoil too much either. Because this this would be a major spoiler for the second movie. But we'll spoil some stuff, just not the main things. Right. But uh, you revisit somebody from the first movie and the twist to it all was fucking well, well, well executed. And then when you find out how, mm-hmm. that's even better. Um, so the differences between part one and part two for me mainly was okay so you pointed out part two felt a little bit more claustrophobic more yeah i did because it was a lot more of that running pov helmet cam mm-hmm. it was a lot more of that kind of shit that wasn't in the first one as mm-hmm. much like the first one was tv camera running around uh but felt kind of blair witchish kind of cloverfieldish mm-hmm. kind of way the way they handled the camera part two was more running down the hallways yeah, the apartments, and you're more yeah. in the apartments exactly which yeah. even though they're long the hallways are narrow yeah, as hell narrow, yeah. the stairways narrow as hell mm. every space everything just felt like you had to like literally like walk with your shoulders in at points mm-hmm. because it, it felt that narrow and you're seeing a bunch of people squeeze into that space so it gives you a little bit of that claustrophobic mm-hmm. feeling and it made it more it gave you more anxiety made it more uh, oh, yeah, nerve wracking because yeah. you're just waiting for something to come out to, like every single turn when they stop and turn and say hey stop doing this I'm like why are you turning around don't turn around yeah, don't focus, do- <laughs> yeah, focus on the whatever you're so it, be, it gives you that intensity and that's what I liked about part 2 mm-hmm. like it didn't give me the jump scare that I got in part 1 but it definitely made me like I was the whole time like my, my hands were doing this because I'm like Holy fuck, what are they going to do? And like Mac was saying, like I'm grabbing a pillow. I'm just like, come on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I love and the way how he got so into it. it just... Yeah. It was really... It, that's what they knocked out really well in part two. Mm-hmm. Now we jump to part three. Part three, they decided to deviate from mm-hmm. the primary characters. Like, completely. Completely, yeah. Uh, the only attachment that they added from the first two films into this one was um, the premise in this movie is a wedding. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's a and, wedding between um, a lovely couple, Clara and Cordo. Yeah. Cordo, I think that's the, pronounce, that's the pronunciation yeah. of the name. Yeah. And you get introduced to one character... Uh, I gotta find his name before I Who? go ahead. Uh, el, no, no, el tío. Oh, Pepe Victor. Or Victor or something like that. Yeah. Pepe Victor. Mm-hmm. Which was the uncle. Um, who comes in and says he, he's bandaged up on his hand. And they ask him, like, hey, what happened? I was like, ah, I was at the vet's office, and some dog went crazy and started biting a yeah. bunch of people. And you're like, ah. And immediately, I paused, and I said, so that's the connection. Mm-hmm. That's the only connection they did. And after part two, I thought it was going to be something different, honestly. Because mm-hmm. I thought they would at least tie that in further into part mm-hmm. three. But they did not. Um, yeah, and part, part of it had to do with the timing of when this is taking place, part three. For, could right? we, yeah, we could say it right or not. I mean, not specifically, nah. but I'll say I'll say part three is happening basically uh, because you see you see in one scene. Um, yeah, the news report is being yeah. You see, Cordo, Cordo's watching some security cameras. At the facility he's at, at the building he's at, mm-hmm. and you see a news, news clippings in the background on the TV that's on, okay, and you're incident. seeing them yeah. going into the house from the first two movies, mm-hmm. so you're kind of tying in that okay, so that's happening either right now, mm-hmm. or it's like a broadcast of stuff that happened earlier yeah, that day or that yeah. night before. Mm-hmm. It had to be the night before because the wedding was in daytime. When they were outside mm-hmm. the church, it was daytime. And the dude was already bit. Yeah, it was daytime, you're right. 
Ooh, should get in yeah, talk yeah. more about the So it's finding out the details. Like, I mean there has to be more chronological order to it, but basically without looking too much more into it would be saying that it was basically happening around the same time. Uh whether it was like right during or yeah. right after, that's the gap. So that's why they don't tie in the ending of part two to this one because it will basically kind of make it impossible. Yeah. So So that part makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's still to me hurt that there was no more bigger connection from the first two films. Yeah, like you said, those two scenes, uh, the bite mark, the TV broadcast, and the the girl, Cristina Medeiros. Yeah, Medeiros. Continues like, there's a connection. Being... Yeah, there's a connection to that. It's just the, those three uh, things. Uh, but I guess like yeah, the saying, but the Medeiros part comes in differently. Yeah. In this one, so because still, you mm-hmm. start finding out more details. The second one, they don't give you too much more insight on this, but the final scenes will give you a very much Silence of the Lambs kind of feel to it because it is using night vision, mm-hmm. and um, there's a lot of anxiety in that moment because it's just the night vision, mm-hmm. and. You're going around, and this is when you get introduced to Tristina Madero, and um, I don't think this is going to be much of a spoiler mm-hmm. to anything, but the person who plays Tristina Madero is the same person who played Crooked Man the in The Conjuring. Too. He also yeah. played... Um, Slender Man. Yeah, so... Javier, I think it's Javier something. I can't pronounce his Spanish last name. So you already mm-hmm. kind of have an idea here. Of um, hold on, Javier Botet. Botet, yeah. Yeah, which is a Spanish actor. Uh, he is from Spain, which yeah. is um, you know, also amazing considering that he's done so many other things that are not only in Spain. Yeah. Um, but you have an idea with just that, considering Crooked Man, considering Slender Man, kind of gives you an idea of what Medeiro looks like. So that's the image you get in night mm-hmm. vision. Yeah, it's like in a, part three. It's like a Stranger Things. No, in part two, you start mm-hmm. finding out that there's more to the night vision aspect yeah. of it, and it's that the night vision plays a factor in finding things you can't see in light. Yeah. Um, Again, you know, so the they whole... added more supernatural things to it at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the whole. It, be, it it added yeah. it added a little extra sprinkle and some magic on top of that. Yeah, and see how basically that works it's like and... God, the you know God, the light, uh, the devil, you know the darkness or did whatever you want to call it, evil and darkness. So yeah, the because uh, one of the possessed characters when they're forced to speak mm-hmm. specifies that the light, the light, them. the light blinds. The, the darkness or something no like the that? light or blinds like, them you know yeah so but they, he mentions that yeah he mentions that the light is a blinding factor mm-hmm. and that's where you see uh, using the night vision they're able to see beyond a bit mm-hmm. and uh, it added a little interesting factor to it to me it wasn't like a destructive little model to it yeah it made it interesting um, part three they changed it up a little bit more in part three they added the detail of the reflection yeah which was that upon reflection, you can see that the person's possessed. And instead of looking like the person they are, they look like Medeiros. Yeah. So they look like the girl, like Cristina Medeiros. So that's what you're getting in part three. Mm-hmm. So part three was, I think you described it from one review, which was, um, was it? a love story. Oh, that was Randall's. They made, they made it a love story. Randall's least favorite part, which I agree and, with. And, I mean, I get the concept. I get the idea. Yeah. I think the execution wasn't done to the best. Like, would you, you say, like a, real, like, a real life scenario, you wouldn't do that? I mean, it would have been different. Yeah. You know, I get the idea of the two lovers can sense each other in a movie yeah. scene, you know, a movie kind of thing overdid it just a little bit with it but they were like oh I can sense that my husband's still alive yeah. 
With your like, soulmate, you know what? Cool, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, PA system. I sense that you're still alive, husband. <laughs> Cute. Nice, okay. Yeah. Short, sweet. Let's keep moving with the movie. Um, they had a lot of extended scenes that just weren't necessary. A lot of little details that just seemed pointless. Yeah. They didn't seem like it would add or benefit the story at all. It was almost like... Hey, we're short like 10 minutes in time. Let's add an extra bit of just slow pace. Yeah, exactly. And it took, it took away a lot from... Uh, a lot of filler. A lot of filler. Yeah. It took away a lot from the scare scenes or any possibility yeah. they could do with jump scares or more gore. Mm -hmm. um, something that... Well, this one had more gore. Yeah, but it could have... Part 3 had more gore than the first two, I think. Of course, yeah. Um, I'm sure you didn't point out certain scenes. Yeah, I uh, think I think part three had more gore, mm -hmm. and I think they went more for the gore than they went for the scare. Yeah, they tried to change it up a bit, which worked a bit. Uh, something that I mean, I kind of enjoyed, but not really. If if you want to stick to these two, um, the POV, you know, it switched up to you know the regular cin cinematography. Yeah. So you had a few minutes of you know first hand camcorder recorded you know found footage yeah until an incident happens and then you know it's switched up to cinematography and you know it's a movie based you know you see it in a movie form um which is fine it was a different take but it just threw you off as you're so used to part one and two and how they were filmed yeah and uh, it took away a lot from the reality reality of what it could have been um, as uh, Randall pointed out, there was a scene where a camcorder was given to a uh, certain individual, which could have recorded the whole um, rest of the film through that. Yeah. But there was no, nothing happened. I don't know, who knows what happens to that camera. I mean, halfway through the movie, it was just gone. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it went from the POV point mm -hmm. to just actual cinematography or actual film. Mm-hmm. So they deviated from the, the then, thing, what makes it successful, what makes it yeah. so good, which is that perspective of, you know, point of view. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what makes it so but great. It, At it, least that's what made part one and two great. Oh, of course. And uh, it was like, you know, the whole shaky camera thing. Yeah. You know, the cameraman is just shaking. You're just trying to focus, like, stay calm. And I want to know what the fuck is happening. Just thought about well, this, too. Because you said um, part three was directed by... Oh yeah, so this is uh, directed, co-directed by Paco Plaza, and uh, it's not Jaime, but it's pronounced like Jaime, 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 Jaime something. Yeah, it has a uh, U in there, weird U. Yeah, uh, instead of the I, it's a U. So they both directed this, which fucking blew it out the park, and for some reason, they they split up basically, and one directed part three, the other one directed part four. And it's, now that I think about it, because I thought about it, maybe... Who directed part three? Which one was it? Uh, Paco Plaza. Paco, okay. Even though Jaime's name is on this one, too. Yeah. But the I, scene with Gordo, that mm. he grabs the camera, throws it down, and then just breaks it. He yeah. literally breaks it right away. Almost like a fuck you, POV. We don't need you. Mm. Well, who knows? We probably got to look into Because at that point, yeah. there's no more camera. Atun gives the little camera to the guy, and then and they record like the, they, they record a little scene, which is like more POV, but and that was it. It goes back to you know cinematography. Yeah. So but it was, if that's what it feels. Now, now that I think about it, it, almost felt like that breaking of that camera was like I don't need you to make this work, and oh, yeah. you were wrong. <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't say they probably felt like it felt they, like it. They felt that they probably could direct a movie by themselves yeah. or something like that. I, it could have been a fight between them. Who knows? We got to look into into that more. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was that. Like, I'm just saying in general. Yeah. It would almost feel like he was saying, like, I don't need this camera to work my movie to make yeah. it work. Like, so, I don't mean the, the separation part. I mean, more in general, just the camera style. Because okay. they were probably saying, oh, you guys are famous for doing the POV movie. Okay. You guys are famous for that found footage thing. Yeah. And they were probably like, okay, we need yeah. to get the fuck away from that. You just reminded me, uh, so the inspiration for part one... <laughs> The inspiration for part one, you know, you would have thought like, oh, you know, a childhood movie, a certain director. Yeah. No, it was just television. Yeah. And we're I'm like, what? TV. 
And it's just, yeah, the, the television, they just wanted to basically do a horror movie uh, based from a TV show, you know, standpoint, yeah. you know, stand, which fucking just, it proved, it proved to the world that that, the wreck could, you know, this movie could hold up to that. So, um, to culminate, part three, a lot of good death scenes, um, slow moments that kind of ruin the momentum of the film mm-hmm. and make you kind of want to punch your TV or want to be like, okay, dude, just like fucking die. I'd rather you die than this. Yeah. Um, but still enjoyable. If you like seeing a lot of gory kill scenes and stuff like that, then definitely an enjoyable movie to that degree. Um, but let's go ahead and start with the ratings. So let's go with part one. Where are you placing part one from one to ten, Mac? Ten out of ten, boy. Yeah, I think I landed on the same thing. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten for you. That that last scare got me going. Mm. Got like I haven't felt my blood race that heavy through my heart in a really long time. I fucking loved it because we just like you said, we just jumped to part two. No breaks. And it's funny, yeah, they don't have uh, credit scenes or nothing. Just part four has an end credit scene. Yeah. And one of them has something in the beginning. But yeah, part two. Yeah. Um Give it a good, uh, I fucking love that movie a lot too. Uh, part, I give it a, a 9.5 out of 10. It's so close to part one, I, I just, <laughs> but 9.5, what about you? Um, so I think I place it at an 8 for myself. And the only reason I drop it any further is just because I do kind of wish that it would have had more jump things happen. You know, I did love and enjoy the intensity, but I did feel that it lost that. I mean, I come off that big fucking jump scare and go to the next one, it's and nothing so. equals even near it to it's me. It's more dialogue. You say, yeah, yeah, I mean, there was a lot more dialogue, yeah. a lot more interaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, we already know what's happening, so I guess mm-hmm. maybe that changed the atmosphere of the movie a bit for me. Yeah. But it, it wasn't too many of those moments where things just catch you off guard. Mm-hmm. And uh, that part kind of like probably lowered it more for me. All right. Good, now, good part three. Part three, I'd uh, say a good 5.5 out of 10 for me. <sighs> yeah, I think. <laughs> God, I feel horror. I feel painful saying this. Just I put it. out a four. All right. And the only reason is the armor scene. Yeah, that drew me out. It's like. The armor. Like, there's. The, 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 one of the guys go. They're in. For, why was that even there? I don't understand. There's the banquet hall. There wasn't the church. But yet, for some reason, they had St. George's fucking armor there. Yeah. And he goes full on King Arthur. And they it, do a it, scene literally. that's literally stored out of the stone, but out of a fucking cake. Yeah. So they, And then, like I said, the delays, the moments like that kind of threw me off. But I don't know. It's 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 okay. still a fun movie to watch. Like, be, it, I would watch it just to see the chainsaw scenes again. Yeah, oh, um, a chainsaw. So I didn't want to give yeah. that out, but you did. And I would love to see uh, Sponge John or oh, there's, John John Sponge. There's a reference to SpongeBob, but yeah, yeah, overall, you know, great great films. We're gonna come back, may some other day to uh, yeah. review part four. But I do thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna cut this right now, right? Yeah, it's gonna be ending soon. Yeah. Um, but just did want to say. Enjoyable series. If you can get a exactly. get a hold of it, go ahead and do it. If you want to go ahead and watch any of the other ones, oh yeah, um, Amazon Prime. Yeah, Rec One is on Prime on Crackle. If you have Sling TV, uh, it's also available on Vudu, Apple TV, and YouTube for purchase. Yeah. Part Two is available on Prime. Uh, you can buy it on YouTube, Apple TV, and Google Play. Part Three. It was available on Amazon, but it's not on anymore. And part four is impossible. Mm-hmm. You can't find that thing anywhere. So And there's um, a comic book. We can't find it. This yeah. has been Ram Historias Film. Historias yeah. Inéditas. This has been Ram Film Reviews. Sorry, we got to cut it short. <laughs> we love you guys. It's not even cutting it short. We're cutting it right on time. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay. Peace out, people. Hello, dude.